Have you ever went out for Mexican food and regretted it a couple of hours later? I know I sure have. In today's video, we are going to make chicken tinga and refried beans that culminates in homemade tostadas even a beginner cook can make. Each tostada costs just $1 and the meal prep actually tastes better as the week goes on. So good. Oh my God. Let's get into it. Off rip, shout out to Internet Shaquille for giving me the inspiration to make this video. The slow cooker is way too underrated, and I started my testing based off his Tinga recipe. Today my cooking vessel will be a Ninja Foodie, but you don't need one to make this recipe. The only advantage of the Foodie is that I can saute and slow cook all in one pot. If you have a slow cooker and a pan, you will get the same result. I will turn it on the saute sear setting, and while that is heating up, we'll get all the ingredients ready because this recipe comes together super quickly and we don't want anything to burn. First, our onion. Cut it in half root to stem and chop off about half an inch from the stem. Peel back a couple layers of the onion, point the knife towards the root, and slice the onion every quarter inch from edge to edge as close to the root as possible. Then push the knife halfway into the onion at two or three different heights with the knife slightly angled downwards. Finish cutting the onion by going stem to root every quarter inch or so and repeat for the other half. For the tinga, we need about 225 grams that we will put in a bowl and off to the side. We also need another 100 grams of onion later, so put that into a plastic bag and throw it in the fridge. Okay. Then we will weigh out 15 grams of garlic and crack 10 grams of it out of its shell, putting the other 5 grams off to the side for later as well. Follow that up by adding 4 grams salt, 4 grams smoked paprika, 2 grams cumin, and 2 grams Mexican oregano into a small bowl. Mexican oregano definitely has a different flavor profile than regular oregano and is available in many chain grocery stores, but if you can't get your hands on any, feel free to sub in with regular oregano. Lastly, we need to prep our chicken breast, 850 grams or just about 2 pounds to be exact. I like to buy these packages since it weighs just about what I need, the chicken is already thinly sliced, and most of the extra fat and tendon is removed. However, you can buy your breasts in bulk and pay half the price. More on what to do with that extra chicken later. I like to go through each breast and make sure any extra fat or tendon is cut out and then I will weigh my meat. If you have larger breasts, simply follow the same process and cut them in half lengthwise so they cook faster. Drop 8 grams of avocado oil into the preheated pot, add the onions, and mix them around so the oil is spread evenly throughout. While those saute, let's open our 14 ounce can of fire roasted tomatoes and 3.7 ounce can of chipotle peppers. These two ingredients are what gives the tinga its signature flavor. If possible, make sure you can get a can of fire roasted tomatoes that only have tomatoes and salt as the ingredients. If your can has garlic, onion, and or other ingredients added to it, it will throw off the overall flavor of the dish. The onions are already becoming translucent, so let's crush in our garlic and throw in the seasonings so they can bloom. Give everything a mix. All of these steps are adding a ton of flavor to the dish, but if you are feeling lazy, you can throw Throw all the ingredients in the slow cooker at the same time, give it a mix, and let it cook. I would say spend the additional 5 minutes for the extra flavor, but I'll leave that up to you. Once the garlic becomes fragrant, add in the tomatoes, chipotle peppers, and 9 grams of better than bouillon chicken base. Again, the better than bouillon is just going to add flavor to the dish, but if you can't get your hands on any, just add an extra 3 grams of salt. Change the foodie settings to slow cook and set the timer for 4-6 to six hours on low. As long as your breasts are between 1 half to 3 quarter inches thick, they will cook to perfection in this time frame. Mix everything together thoroughly and then add the chicken breasts. I like to get some of the tomato stew on top of the breasts so the meat is brining as it cooks. For a finishing touch, we will add 2 bay leaves to the pot and close the lid. Now is the perfect time to chug some pre-workout, go to the gym, burn a ton of calories, and build some muscle while taking care of any other chores you may have to do as well. Code E4CM will save you 10% on all of your supplement needs, and will help support the channel. Three hours have passed and I got everything done I needed to today. It is the perfect time to start the beans, so everything is done at once. Similar to the tinga, all we need is one pot. Let's add 230 grams of beans to a colander and give the beans a rinse. 
We'll get our pot on a scale and add our beans along with 800 grams of water and 5 grams of salt. It honestly doesn't matter what kind of beans you use, but for a classic refried bean, today I'll be using Pinto. Mix everything together and put on the stovetop on medium heat. Just as the beans start to boil, we will reduce the heat to low and cover with a lid. If you don't cover with a lid, you will have to keep adding water to the pot and will throw off the bean recipe, so make sure you don't skip this step. Now go do something for two hours like play with your dog or check out my cookbook that had this recipe added two weeks before it was on YouTube as well as the other 130 recipes that are also included. There are a plethora of 5 star reviews and countless weight loss testimonials that heavily involved using my recipes. So if you want a cookbook in your pocket that will help you get to your goals, click the link in the pin comment and use code E4CM for 10% off the cookbook and receive new recipes before anyone else. And two hours later, we'll come back and check on our beans. We should be able to grab a few out of the pot and easily smash them with a gentle press of our fingers. If your beans aren't ready, give them a stir and cover with a lid for another 30 minutes and check again. As an FYI, I made these more than five times during testing and they never needed more than two hours. Once fully cooked, put the beans and all of its juices into a large bowl. Get the pot right back on the stove top and turn the heat up to medium. I always have some bacon fat in my fridge and I love the taste it gives to refried beans, so I will be using 6 grams of that. However, if you don't have any bacon fat, you can easily sub in avocado oil or the oil of your choice. The pot will already be hot from cooking the beans, so as soon as the bacon fat is melted, we'll grab our 100 grams of onions we put in the fridge earlier and add them right to the pot. Once translucent, we will mince in our garlic and add a small pinch of Mexican oregano, chili powder, and cumin as well. Mix everything together and once the garlic becomes fragrant, dump the bowl of beans back into the pot. We need to smash our beans and we can do this one of two ways. One, we can use a potato masher, specifically if we want a chunkier type of bean. However, I like some chunks of beans, but overall, I want a smoother consistency, so I am going to use an immersion blender. Starting in one part of the pot, I will spin the immersion blender for a second, then move next to it and spin for another second, repeating the process throughout the pot until I get my desired chunkiness. This is exactly the chunk level I want, but we aren't done yet because these beans are way too runny and won't hold up on a tostada. We need to simmer for an additional 5-10 to 10 minutes while constantly stirring until desired thickness is achieved. Please note, the beans will thicken up a good amount once they cool, so I wouldn't make them too thick unless you like a thick paste consistency. Once I see a streak of the pan as I run my spatula through it, I know the beans are perfectly thick for me. We will remove them from the heat, give them one last stir, and let them cool. It has been just over 5 hours since we started our chicken, and it is time to check on it. If our breast falls apart while trying to get it out of the slow cooker, there we go. We know we are good to go. We will get all of the chicken onto a large cutting board and using two forks, it's time to shred. As you can see, this is easily pulling apart and in just a couple of minutes, the chicken is shredded. Some people may prefer a chunkier sauce, but I would like to get the chipotle peppers and onions completely broken down for a smooth sauce before adding the chicken back in. Let's take the two bay leaves out of the pot and add everything else into a high-sided container. Use an immersion blender to mix, add it back to the pot along with the chicken, and cover that chicken in sauce. At this point, all we have to do is grab some meal prep containers and add about 250 grams of chicken tinga and 170 grams of refried beans to each container. These numbers will vary based on your slow cooker or stove top, but this should get you in the general range. Also, feel free to eyeball this if you will be eating all these meal preps anyway, since the calories will be the same at the end of the week. By the way, I love these meal prep containers because they are airtight so they keep the food fresher for longer than the typical containers, so if you have the extra money to spend, I highly recommend them. Reheating our food is simple, but first we have to cover tostada choices. Any tostadas that are 2 for 120 calories will work great here and are widely available. However, if you are near an HEB or somewhere that sells baked tostadas, I would suggest getting them instead because you get 3 for the same calories as 2 of the fried tostadas. And when tested side by side, it was hard to tell the difference between the two. Before reheating, I have sliced 30 grams of avocado and chopped up 20 grams of both lettuce and tomato so the tostadas can be served hot and fresh. 
Then I will damp a paper towel, cover the meal prep, and throw it into the microwave in one minute intervals for two to three minutes total, mixing the ingredients between each interval. Once heated to your preference, top each tostada with beans, tinga, avocado, two grams of cotija cheese, lettuce, and tomato. And yes, these calories include the tostadas and all of the toppings listed. 600 calories for three tostadas is unheard of and you will be saving a lot of money on both the cost of this meal prep and toilet paper too. The only major problem with this recipe is that if you buy chicken in bulk, you will have several pounds extra and with how expensive everything is, we don't want to waste food. Luckily, I have a McChicken meal prep that will make great use of that chicken, includes fries that taste like you just went through the drive through and will be a great one-two punch with these tostadas in any meal plan. I highly recommend you check it out. Until next time, deuces.